This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Could it be Bob Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smithbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesdays at 10, Thursdays at 3. At Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, Vast Wasteland, the video journal of popular culture. I'm Mark Schmidbauer. And I'm Wilbert Neal. And tonight, we're going to talk about, yes, DC Comics, again. We're going to finally finish DC Comics tonight. Yeah, at least we think we will. <laughs> we're going to make a valiant attempt. <laughs> it's another one, of course, of our comic book shows. And uh, before we get into the big extravaganza, oh fun, just want to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6. Wednesdays at 10. And Thursdays at 3 p.m. Here on ACTV Cable, Cable 21. 21. <laughs> and also, if you want to write into Vast Wasteland, like this upcoming letter did. Yeah, but actually, Gallic the letter didn't write to us in. Somebody wrote the letter and sent it in to us. You want to write into box 151411, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us to stop doing this sig soggy thing between the two of us. <laughs> well, in fact, here is a very a, a letter that someone actually sent in. A Joe Neff of, oh, yes, just Columbus, okay, writes in, Dear Vast Wastelanders, howdy from the west side, undoubtedly Columbus's number one community. Anyway, I just wanted to drop a line saying how much I love your show, undoubtedly the most creative, inventive show on TV today. Well, we agree with you. <laughs> While the networks crank out a steady stream of dribble, you guys constantly entertain in an unparalleled way. Keep it up and I'll keep watching. Just to ask a couple questions. I never did see the DC Comics show. Did it happen? Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. This what is, in if, fact, the third one. <laughs> if you blinked, you missed it. There was some sort of technical problem. <laughs> and how come you guys were preempted for two weeks on Wednesday before November 11th? Well, same reason. Technical difficulties. There's nothing I hate more than to tune in at 10 and see ACTV switch to Community Channel 3. Well, mm. so does everybody else. Where's the justice in this world? Well, as a loyal fan for more than a year, I hope to see many more years of VW on that great forum for the public, Access Cable 21. 
until Mark holds up in the attic and has drooling spasms. Make mine vast wasteland. Thanks, Joe <laughs> P.S. Yes, Wilbert, I'm the kid you met at the comic book show. You know, the one at the Sheridan by Northland Mall. Oh, he's the guy. <laughs> that guy. Okay, <laughs> got to show the album. Oh, yeah. The, yeah the... <laughs> and apparent, apparently Joe was, Joe was somehow like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he, I, he must have dropped it or was chewing on it or something. We're not exactly sure what happened. It actually appeared at, to my place looking this way. <laughs> so, we don't know. It's pretty, pretty scary. But thanks for writing anyway, Joe. Maybe he was running and tripped and fell in a puddle. You that, know, he it, was in such a hurry to send it to us. That's right. He, there you go. <laughs> Once he scribbled it down. Well. Thanks, Joe. Thanks a lot. Well, on to DC Comics. When we were last talking about uh, DC, uh, we had just gotten past the imaginary period, the imaginary tale period of the late 60s. Um, so pretty much after that moved through and we actually got back to real continuity, people had just gotten so darn tired of imaginary stories that uh, it was decided that, no, things have to be more serious. And the reason they decided that, because Marvel Comics was pretty much uh, Making... beating them really badly in the in the industry. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and Marvel was doing serious stuff, so DC said, hmm, maybe we should do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, gee, it's like, um, you know, not... Not that not that comics aren't imaginary anyway, but they just uh, well, Marvel was dealing with more um, realistic subjects, I guess. Yeah, so. the, the heroes had problems, and you know there was drug abuse and and you know violence, it, well, teen violence, not comic book violence, yeah, and real friends leaving. <laughs> yeah. You know, they, They'd dump you for somebody right. else, and all this, or they would die, you know, things like that. So DC decided to jump, jump on the big. Reality man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jump on the reality man. So, so they did uh, with uh, with a groundbreaking series uh, of uh, Green Lantern, Green Arrow yeah. uh, from Neil Adams and I'm blanking on the other name. <laughs> well, it was Neil Adams. <laughs> I know it was Neil Adams. <laughs> People are going to write in. Write in and tell us who the other guy was. <laughs> Neil Adams and the other guy. And the other guy. <laughs> very, very important guy, though, I can tell you. Denny O'Neill, we've been just told. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our, our crack research team has just voted, called in with Denny O'Neill was the mm -hmm. other guys. Well, anyway, they won lots of awards because it was a, it actually showed them uh, seeing realistic subjects and, and there's this, this, this famous uh, scene and it's a, a landmark scene where this, um, where this black uh, old guy was asking Green Lantern, you know, you help the what is it? You help the purple, the purple, the purple skins. guy, the purple skins and the, the and the yellow, yellow skins, yeah. But why don't you help? Skins. Why don't you help the black skins? And he and he's like, I can't answer that. He and he, and he an realizes, answer. you know, that he's been so busy in space, he's kind of forgotten that uh, he was supposed to protect Earth. Yeah. And uh, you know, and so they go on this journey uh, across America with, um, didn't, wasn't one of the... One of the Guardians. One of the Guardians. Showed up and <laughs> came along with them. Yeah, and so this was like a landmark series and it, and it began for DC, the realistic period that went on for a while actually. At, the, at around the same time they decided, well, it's time to kind of change Superman a little bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> by that point, Superman was, you know, he could, uh, as, I, as I think I read in one book, he could uh, he could uh, destroy distant galaxies by listening hard. I mean, this guy was <laughs> <laughs> this guy was pretty much God. I mean, <laughs> could do absolutely anything. <laughs> so he decided maybe we should cut him back a little bit. <laughs> he's just too darn super. <laughs> because let's let's cut him back. Because he's just too darn unbeatable. They almost had to bring in kryptonite or magic yeah. every single issue to make it even a slightly fair fight. <laughs> <laughs> Usually the villain would come in. Without one of those two things, Superman just backhand him and it would be all over. It was, wasn't particularly interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they had this series where um, they well first they decided they weren't gonna get they were gonna get rid of Kryptonite as as a plot device. So <laughs> so uh, unbeknownst to Superman, the the army or somebody I forget what it is, the military will say. Uh, figure out a way to turn all the kryptonite on Earth to lead or iron. <laughs> and so they, sh they explode this bomb that sends radiation everywhere and does it. It actually turns everything, all the kryptonite and iron. It also knocks Superman flat on his back and, and he's like, while he's in the sand, for some reason, it's a very strange thing, 
part of his essence goes into the sand and creates this this other Superman. And, and <laughs> suffice to say, when it's all over with, <laughs> this other Superman goes into this other universe and permanently takes a third of Superman's powers with him. Hmm. <laughs> and and so for about for about a year, well, probably less than that, they decided, you know, that there would actually be scenes where Superman was like, boy, this used to be you know, really easy, but now it's pretty tough because I don't have all those powers anymore. Uh, and also at the same time, they decided that um, in kind of a swipe at how, at the time, DC was being bought out by Warner Communications, the Daily Planet was bought out by Edge Communicate or Galaxy Communications. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, the, and the chief guy at, uh, at Galaxy, Morgan Edge, decides that Clark Kent, you know, this is a na he's a natural for television. <laughs> I don't know. He's a natural for TV, yeah. apparently. Well, make so, him an anchorman. Yeah, so they made him an anchorman. <laughs> so this thing went on, and, and this went on for several months until basically the, the people who had come in and done this moved on to other projects, and the, the standard writers came back in and, and blew it off because they basically said, well, he was infinitely powerful, so taking away a third of infinity is still infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you can't stop us. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so it went back to silly plot lines. <laughs> well, what else do we have? Well, let's see. About that same time, I guess um, Batman got his big, um, well, not his biggest redoing, but a redoing where he was no longer at stately Wayne Manor, wasn't this? Where he got the uh, the penthouse apartment downtown right. somewhere, mm -hmm. and he worked from there, which mm -hmm. this was really odd, but. Man, and you actually saw him doing stuff as Bruce Wayne once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> he actually had to run the huge corporation he had. <laughs> the Wayne Foundation. The Wayne Foundation. Or I guess the Wayne Corporation. Wayne Corp or whatever. Wayne Foundation was more of their, um, their charity organization. Right. So. right. <laughs> and so he had this substitute bat cave under the skyscraper and yeah. all this. And, <laughs> and, and, it was a lot more, and it was a lot more dark than it had been because it had gotten pretty silly just like most of the comics had. <laughs> Oh. It was mostly fighting, you know, dippy aliens and going back and it was Batman and Robin go back and help Robin Hood. <laughs> or or Batman and Robin go to uh, the Stone Age, you know. Well, they were doing kind of like kind of like the, it's, they suddenly met somebody with a wayback machine or something. They were doing a lot of things with <laughs> Superman too where they yeah. would go back and Batman, Robin and Superman will become the Three Musketeers yeah. or something. <laughs> It was all very silly. <laughs> it was just silly. <laughs> very, very silly. And of course, they, for a while, they tried to do the camp that the that the uh, the sixties TV series was so much on. They yeah. tried that for a while, and they realized yeah, this, this is, is really doesn't work in a yeah, comic it's too book. Too darn stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, anyways, that, the fabled Aunt Harriet was in there for maybe that long yeah. in the comic book, and <laughs> boom, she's gone. They just decided to ship her on off somewhere. <laughs> And down here, he's in a home somewhere right. now, so. Well, let's see, so um, the 70s uh, kind of continue, and uh, there was kind of a period, really, as far as I'm concerned, from about 75 to 80, where, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, uh, DC was pretty much creatively bankrupt. <laughs> they, they, they were doing just absolutely, their, their sales plummeted, they, they couldn't do a darn thing, it was, things were not doing well. The only thing that I can remember the, the the last big event was Swamp Thing. Uh, Bernie Wrightson, yes, no. yeah, yeah. Bernie, Bernie Wrightson Bernie was um, came out Lynn with this, Wine. yeah, who <laughs> came out with this character. Let's see, I'm trying to remember the basic concept of Swamp Thing. <laughs> um, let's see, you've got uh, this professor who's working in a swamp, and he um, has come up with so. What is it? A new growth something that'll right. grow things almost virtually anywhere. As long as there's a drop of water, you can just have plant life and you can feed the world. <laughs> yep. And well, the the guy that he was now was he somehow it blows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it blows up. To say it blows up. It blows up. <laughs> it kills his wife and blows him into the swamp covered with the stuff and the. Swamp kind of um, reforms him and nurtures him and everything and grows on to him and he comes back as this shambling um, carpet of moss and <laughs> veins and vines and things and 
he becomes a um, a doer of good, but nobody can understand him, and they just think he's a big monster, and they are scared. Kind of a kind of an Incredible Hulk kind of thing. Okay, except, except for the fact that he's always Swamp Thing. He's always he a doesn't swamp turn thing. back at some point. He's yes. Swamp Thing forever. <laughs> so the swampy, swampy, swamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but that was like the last major thing that I can think of before before the 80s that <laughs> that they did. Well, there's there's a couple projects. I wanted to show this. They did a, a miniseries in, um, they did a miniseries in, uh, I think this was like mid 70s called uh, called Camelot 3000, and the idea basically was that uh, this this um, it's in the year 3000. Aliens are attacking Earth, and this kid whose father was an archaeologist, uh, they're working at this dig in Britain, and he runs away because the the uh, aliens are attacking and they kill his parents and. And he and he finds himself at uh, Stonehenge, and and of course the, the the history of of Camelot and King Arthur is that when in in if Britain is in its hour of Britain, need, in its hour of need, the, yeah. then then King Arthur, Arthur will return. Returns. And he they he goes into this passage, and sure enough, there's a crypt with King Arthur in it. He wakes up. And it turns out that all the other uh, all the other members of his court were reincarnated somehow into 30th century people. Yes. <laughs> and so it's kind of like it, it, and uh, it's as, it's a lot like King Arthur, except it's King Arthur in the year 3000. In the future, yeah. <laughs> it's and it was and uh, it was actually kind of groundbreaking for DC because there's there's actual graphic, much more graphic violence. Uh, much uh, actual, uh, there, I think there's several, uh, lots of nudity, there's, you know, I mean, and it was really a, a departure for DC, and it was the first time they had really gone into this kind of thing. And, and, um, and it was the first time they, they had dared to do something that was outside the Comics Code Authority. Is it, is it Lancelot or Galahad? They, it's Lancelot, I believe, that comes back as a woman. Uh, um, it? No, it's um, Tristan. Oh, okay. I think. I was kind of thinking it was Lancelot. <laughs> no, no, Lancelot's uh, this French industrialist. Okay. Everybody else is pretty much turns into people that you would 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 make sense <laughs> for the most part, uh, except except for Tristan who comes back as a woman, and and that that in itself creates some interesting yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah situations. So so they had that, but for the most part they really weren't doing a lot. They were trying little experiments like that. But it looked like from they uh, just kind of whatever thing they could market. <laughs> they like, were because uh, Atari was another division of Warner, so they had Atari Force, and I mean it was just silly, silly concepts. <laughs> and then the '80s came along, and an event that didn't happen at DC kind of changed the the shape of the entire industry. This series called ElfQuest came out from Warp Graphics uh, in the like '80, 80, '81, and. Um, this came out, and it was the first really uh, good-selling or high sale or high whatever. It sold a lot of copies for an independent. Nobody had ever sold a lot of copies for an independent, and it was in black and white, and it and it blew off most of the Comics Code Authority stuff, and uh, also at the same time, it, uh, it they and a, a number of other companies said we're going to start actually paying our artists royalties mm. <laughs> and our writers uh, royalties for stuff because before and until 1980 uh, if you were working in a comic book company you created a character the instant you created it you had no rights to it <laughs> you basically were paid salary, salary and that was and it, that was and it. And <laughs> if they ever did anything with that character too bad <laughs> so well and these independent companies did it and there was a huge uprising in the community in the creative community and they said why don't the big guys do it too and they did so from and from the 80s on in, they said, we'll pay you. You know, obviously the company still owned the character. You couldn't take the character to another company if you wanted to, but they still owned the character. But no matter what they did with it, if they kept using them, you got royalties. So <laughs> as a result of that, there was an explosion of new characters because <laughs> everyone went, cool. All right. <laughs> we'll make money, so we'll crank out characters. So there was an explosion of new characters. <laughs> And at the same time, the Comics Code Authority just kind of faded <laughs> very quickly away. <laughs> and uh, so, let's see, we, uh, as we get into the, let's see, I'm trying to think, uh, about 1985, really, uh, the, 
the most uh, earth-shattering, <laughs> multiverse-shattering event in the DC universe, the crisis on infinite Earths <laughs> occurred, uh, where basically the um, uh, there, there were all these various universes, which we went into in an earlier episode. There was Earth 1 and Earth 2 and Earth 3 and Earth S and, you know, <laughs> lots of different Earths. And it was just so confusing that nobody at DC understood it all. <laughs> Even people who worked there for years, you had to bring several people together to explain everything. <laughs> so there were too many details and they said, we have to simplify stuff. We have 50 years of screwed up continuity that it's just, you know, it's just suffocating the storylines because <laughs> you have to relate everything back to everything from the beginning. So they said, well, we're just going to wipe out most of the universes <laughs> and we'll kill off some heroes and, and show that we're really serious about this because they had tried stuff like this before and it, people said, well, y you, it's just going to be an imaginary story. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody believed them. So they said, oh yeah, well, we're going to kill off the Flash and Supergirl, and you know, and they were just killing heroes, and, and they really killed them. There, there wasn't, you know, it wasn't, well, they kind of, you know, went into a coma, or or they disappeared into another continuity. No, they, they were, were dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> they were gone. <laughs> so this, uh, by the time the series was over, there was only one Earth. Uh, all the heroes were on it, although there were a lot less heroes, because a lot of them faded away from <laughs> lack of interest or something, yes. <laughs> and others were killed. There's lots of them killed. <laughs> um, and really, at that point, you really saw that uh, DC had uh, changed its opinion. <laughs> you know, it said, we really have to revitalize DC Comics, so we're going to go back and uh, kind of throw out continuity for each one of the heroes, or our major heroes, and reshape them in a more one. 80s style. And the first one was the big S. <laughs> mm -hmm. He showed up and they said, well, we've got 50 years of candor and, and uh, the Fortress of Solitude mm -hmm. and, and, the super and family. green kryptonite, I mean, uh, like red and gold and jeweled kryptonite and the, and the Legion of Super Pets. And I mean, just ludicrous stuff that had been done like, mostly in the 50s and 60s, but with yeah. still continuity. So. <laughs> So they said, we're going to redo it. They threw everything out. <laughs> they, just, they just took the whole continuity and went, ah, it's out of here. Out the window. And we'll start over. And so John Byrne came in and uh, redid the hero, redid Superman. Uh, there was no longer a Superboy. Ma and Pa Kent were still alive by the time he was Superman. They're still alive in the continuity, yeah. although Superman isn't. <laughs> well, <laughs> He just, it, he just it, got no. killed. But <laughs> this is the Superman that got killed. <laughs> And uh, they, they kind of brought back other concepts, but in doing so, they kind of tinkered around with them a lot. Like, Luthor is now a rich industrialist who does a lot of evil stuff, but he does it with, uh, you know, loopholes, and, and he has a lot of lawyers, and he never gets thrown in jail as a result. He does it the corporate way. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and he's about the same age as Perry White now, instead of the same age as Superman. <laughs> So let's see. Uh, but then now, uh, what what was the whole thing there? Did he touched some kryptonite at one point. He was wearing this kryptonite ring for several months, and again, another change was, in the old continuity, you hurt humans had no you know had kryptonite had no effect on humans at right. all. Well, it turns out, under prolonged exposure, kryptonite does have an effect in humans in the new continuity, and gave him cancer. In fact, uh, in fact, he was going to be dying of cancer, and, and he. Uh, supposedly killed himself in this jet plane accident, but he got his brain put in this this other body. <laughs> it gets kind of silly, but, but that's pretty much comic books for you. Yep. <laughs> that's why they're comic books. That's why they're comic books. It would be they're, news if They're not. allowed to be silly. <laughs> so, well, let's see. Um, and then the next hero <laughs> that, that got the, the treatment. <laughs> well, the bat dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He got a big treatment. Frank Miller came in and just kind of, just, he just tinkered around with it a lot. <laughs> and he took him, it was some years into the future. <laughs> there it is. Some years into the future. It's uh, the Dark Knight kind of idea. The Dark Knight returns, and it's like, well, where was he before? Right. What, what happened? So you read into it, and it's, um, it's some years into the future. Um, He's like in his 60s now. Yeah, and... Um, He's he retired hasn't, he for hasn't years. done the bat thing for so long because, well, he 
he goes back and looks and um, well there was there was Dick Grayson who moved on and then there was Jason who oh he was the second Robin he got killed <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the Joker kind of did a number on him but I figured that was kind of well there's there's a twofold thing there one was um, he was just an arrogant son of a gun and and they they didn't really like him and the other part was he his parents where he found his parents yeah and he was it was gonna be happy <laughs> can't have that we Hell can't up. have that because <laughs> the whole idea behind batman and robin is <laughs> yeah they actually had a, uh, a a groundbreaking story line where in the in the next to the final story they said one of these three people are going to die <laughs> in the next issue and it's going to be it's going to be the Joker, Robin, or I think it was Commissioner Gordon, I think. And, and they said, and here's a 900 number. <laughs> you we'll leave it up to you. And see who, who should be killed. And, and they picked Robin. The public chose Jason. <laughs> Boom, he's out of there. <laughs> Ooh, and the Joker does a number and a half on him, too. That's right. <laughs> and then when he finishes that, well, he blows him up. <laughs> Oh. And so, well, he, he got this book, and it's some years in the future, and Batman's looking back at the whole thing, and, well, well, um, Bruce Wayne's looking back at the whole right. idea and thinking, well, uh, no, it's just not worth it for me to go back, even though crime is rampant and things are just terrible going on. And so, um, it's actually um, a girl that dresses up it's as Robin. The, it, it, must, it apparently is, is the fourth, at least the fourth Robin. Well, Because there's now a third now. Robin. <laughs> There's Tim Drake, yeah, uh, but this must be a, at least a fourth Robin who is a girl, <laughs> and, and she actually gets gets back to him. Gets in. Does, does she get into the Batcave actually to pull him? In I don't or? remember offhand. <laughs> but it, well, she she gets him to come back as Batman. But a, a Batman who has absolutely no problem with killing anybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Joker is like uh, this old Joker is laughing at him. You know, it's like you won't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> And he blows him out of the water. And so basically, he's just going through his whole rogues gallery and taking him out. <laughs> and he's got a, a big tank of a Batmobile right. <laughs> now. It's, it's just huge. Just incredible. Superman, who's a government agent, comes in and tries to right. stop him. Yeah. And he doesn't listen to him. The Green Arrow all these, comes in. All these heroes come back. He's like got one out, arm now. He yeah. doesn't work. Uh, they try to, Catwoman tries to talk to him. It's just all, oh, it's crazy. <laughs> but that was, uh, and that was pretty much um, Tim Burton's, um, his, 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 um, he looked at that and said, hey, this is I, I like this do. dark idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do a movie. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, so. When he did the first Batman, he based it pretty much on the the Dark Knight series. The Dark Knight series, Although, right. all, the feeling more than the continuity. Right, the feeling that um, Batman didn't really care if he killed somebody right. or not. Yeah, <laughs> to take him out of the right. thing. Now, when when did the Watchmen thing? Okay, Watchmen was another concept they came out with, uh, twelve issue miniseries that um, uh, it was an alternate alternate reality where there are a bunch of heroes but most of the heroes are Batman types that is they don't have any powers they just they have gadgets and or they're really athletically inclined right okay and it's it it tries to show what would probably really happen if there were actual superheroes they'd be uh, forced to become government agents or be vigilantes <laughs> It was probably right, it's kind of based around... I think around 85, 86 it came okay. out. But um, the, the time frame in it is kind of around, um, isn't it around like the McCarthyism kind of thing where they're... Well, it kind of it kind of goes all the way from the 40s to, to the 80s. Okay. And uh, there's only one actual real superhero called uh, Dr. Manhattan, who's this guy who was locked in a... Uh, some sort of atomic chamber, and it's it's set off, and his... So I forget, his intrinsic field is removed okay. from his body, and so he becomes this godlike being who can do anything, and because of him, uh, the U.S. wins Vietnam very quickly, <laughs> like, you know, in like a couple months. So as a result, in the 1980s, Nixon is still president because he's kind of like Roosevelt now. He won the war, you know, he got out there, and so... So Nixon, uh, an older Nixon, is still president in the 80s, <laughs> and, and it's and it's also you know graphically violent. It's uh, it's very very convoluted. Yeah. 
uh, and it goes kind of there's kind of takes swipes at merchandising and and most of the most of the the trends in the superhero you know in the comic book field at the time and it would it won buku awards basically oh yeah people just loved it because they right. said this this is what comics should be <laughs> so so and finally we just want to talk about the uh the event that just occurred <laughs> The death of Superman. Yeah, Superman's <laughs> been killed. So, um, plot, plot point or marketing ploy? We'll you decide. See how long this lasts? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know if it's a milestone or just a just a cheap way to to get money. A yeah, cheap way to sell more. <laughs> That's comics. right. So, anyways, we've been told to get out of here. So next time, we're going to be talking about. Uh, more toys and games, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be another potpourri show, so it'll be more toys and games, more fun and surprises. And, and next time on the comic book version, which is three shows from now, we're finally going to get to Marvel. So, <laughs> we'll be back next time. Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland.